Hello students, how are you? I hope you are doing fine in this corona pandemic period. As you know that a third variant that is the Omicron variant is spreading very rapidly. So we have to stay safe. We will continue with the online classes and as you know that the examinations are coming near. So today is the last topic that is left in the syllabus we will discuss today that is the quadratic equations. And after this topic our syllabus will be over and we will continue with the revision classes. Okay. Yes, very good. So today we will start the topic that is quadratic equations. So basically before understanding about quadratic equations, first understand what is the meaning of the word quadratic. And before understanding what is the meaning of the word quadratic and equations like this, first we need to understand what is an algebraic expression. What is an algebraic expression? We need to understand this. So suppose I write only 4. Suppose I write only 4, then what is this 4? 4 is a number, number is a constant, so we will call it a constant term. If I write x plus 4, then what is x plus 4? x plus 4 is a linear expression. What is x squared plus x plus 4? We call x squared plus x plus 4 as quadratic expressions. And what is x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 4? This is called cubic expressions. Now, what is the reason that we are calling this one as linear and this one as quadratic and this one as cubic expressions? There must be a certain rule, a certain criteria based upon which we are deciding which expression is linear, which expression is quadratic and which expression is cubic. So what is that basic rule? The basic rule says that whenever you are looking on the x, the variable x, look for the highest power of that variable x in the given expression. So here the highest power of the x is here that is x raised to the power 1 which is x. So here the highest power of x is 1 and when the highest power of x is 1 we call it linear expression. In this given expression the highest power of x is 2. So we are calling it quadratic expression and in this, and in this expression the highest power of x is 3. So we are calling it cubic expression. So it is clear that it is clear that when the highest power of x was 2 in the given expression, we called it quadratic expression. That means there is a relation. Whenever the highest power of x is 2, we will call it quadratic. I hope now you will able to understand what is the meaning of quadratic. Quadratic means when the highest power of x is 2, we call it quadratic. That means here the highest power of x is 2. So we are calling it quadratic expression. Now in the topic it is written as equation but we are dealing with expression. So what is the difference between expression and equation? Who can tell? What is the difference between expression and equation? Yes, very good. Yes, 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 very good. See, when we ask what is an equation, equation is nothing but it is an algebraic expression only. Equation is nothing but an algebraic expression only but that is equated to 0 that we will equate to 0. So when we equate any algebraic expression to 0 we call it an equation. When we equate any algebraic expression to 0 we call it equation. For example in the previous example as you can see we had said x plus 4 is a linear expression. Now I am doing x plus 4 and I am writing equal to 0 so this becomes a linear equation. In the previous example x squared plus x plus 4 was said as quadratic expression. But now I am writing x squared plus x plus 4 along with equal to 0. So this becomes quadratic equation. That means whenever we are putting this equal to 0 with the expression that becomes an equation. Similarly here x cube plus x squared plus x was this one was cubic expression. And here the same thing is written with equal to 0. We are calling it cubic equation. I hope now it is clear that an algebraic expression when it is made equal to 0 we call it equation and that is what is happening over here. That is what is happening over here. Now if in this equation the highest power of x is 1 we call it linear equation. The highest power of x is 2. The highest power of x is 2 we are calling it quadratic equation and the highest power of x is 3 we are calling it cubic equation. So this is how we will decide which equation is linear, which equation is which equation is quadratic and which equation is cubic. This is how we will decide. Now if we understand about quadratic equations, since our topic is about quadratic equation, so if we understand about quadratic equation, we will see that any equation which is of the form ax square plus bx plus c is called the quadratic equation. 
any equation that is of the form ax square plus bx plus c is called quadratic equation where a must be not equal to 0 and the other a, b, c are all real number coefficients. All these are real number coefficients. Yes, very good. Don't worry about the notes and this PDF. This entire PDF and notes I will send in the WhatsApp group. No need to take any screenshot or write anything. First try to understand the concept that I am teaching. First try to understand the concept. After that I will give some questions that you will solve it. First try to understand the concept. No need to take any screenshot or write in the copy. I will provide this same very PDF in the WhatsApp group. So don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Yes. Now always remember when we are talking about the quadratic equation. Always you have to remember that the highest power of x is equal to 2. That is called the degree of the quadratic equation and that is always equal to 2. And because of this 2 only we are calling it quadratic equation. The highest power of x is 2 and we are calling it the degree of the quadratic equation. And since the highest power is 2, therefore we will say that a quadratic equation has two roots. A quadratic equation always has two roots. And this is very important. Sometimes this question is asked in the MCQ exams. What is the highest power of the quadratic equation? What is the maximum number of roots of any quadratic equation? Like these questions are asked in one marks MCQ. So you have to keep this in mind. This is very important. Now we will see some examples of quadratic equation. What are the basic examples of quadratic equation? Suppose this one x square plus 2x plus 4. This is equal to 0. So this is an example of quadratic equation. As you can see the highest power of x is 2. In this example also the highest power of x is 2 equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation. In this one also the highest power of x is 2 equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation. That means all these equations that you are seeing, all these equations that you are seeing, they are in the form of ax square plus bx plus c where a is not equal to 0, and a, b, c all are real numbers. So which is why we are calling this as quadratic equations. Very good. So there must be some equations which do not come under the category of quadratic equations. There are some equations which will not follow this rule. What are these equations? As you can see in this one, you can see this is not a quadratic equation. Can anyone tell me why this is not a quadratic equation? Why this equation is not quadratic equation? Can anyone tell me? Yes, very good. Yes, yes, very good. Because you can see that the power of x that is 3 is given. The power of x is 3. The highest power of x is 3. So this is not a quadratic equation. In the second example also the power of x is given 5. So this is not a quadratic equation. In the third example also here x square is in the denominator. If you take the LCM then x square will multiply here. So it will become x to power 4. So this is also not a quadratic equation. Because if you take the LCM and we multiply it with the numerator then this will become x raised to the power 4. So this is not a quadratic equation. And this third one can anyone tell me this this last last equation can anyone tell me is this a quadratic equation or not? Can anyone tell me this is quadratic equation or not? Yes tell me. They know this is this is not quadratic equation. This is also not quadratic equation because you can see the power of x is 2 very good. This condition is satisfied. But as you can see I said that a, b, c the constant terms should be all real numbers. But here you see it is root minus 2. It is root minus 3 and we know that root minus 2 and root minus 3 are nothing but complex numbers. They are imaginary numbers. Okay. So these are complex numbers which is why this coefficient of x is not a real number and this constant term is not real number therefore this entire equation is not quadratic equation very good yes this is not quadratic equation it has to satisfy both the property that is a should not be equal to 0 highest power of x should be equal to 2 and a b c all should be real numbers these all three conditions should be satisfied if all the three conditions are satisfied then only we will call it a quadratic equation yes very good i hope this example is clear and these are very important examples because in exam directly these examples will be asked. They will say they point out the non-quantitative equations from the given set like this. They will ask the question. So you have to understand these examples very nicely. Okay. Yes. Now see we will learn about solving a quadratic equation using the factorization method. Means a given quadratic equation is given to us. So we have to solve it by using the factorization method. So we will see how we will solve it. So in this question it is given, in this question as you can see it is, in this question as you can see it is given, it is given that x square, x square plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0, x square plus 5x 
plus 6 is equal to 0. If we compare it with the standard form that is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0, we come to know that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 5 and c is equal to 6. So from here what we will do, we will find the product of a and c that is 6 and we will find the factors of 6. The factors of 6 are 2 and 3 respectively. They are 2 and 3. That means 6 can be written as the product of 2 into 3 is equal to 6. Also you see that if I say 2 into 3 is 6. Also if I say that 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. That means this 5 the middle term we have to split the middle term. So this 5x can be split into 2x plus 3x such that 2x plus 3x if I am splitting such that the product of these two terms the product of these two terms is equal to product of this coefficient and this constant the product of this coefficient and this constant that is 6 ok so this is giving me 6 that is why I, I had shown this one to find the factors of 6 why a and c product you have to obtain so that means I can split this 5x into 2x plus 3x 5x can be split in, in the form of 2x plus 3x. So, the uh, quadratic equation can be written as x square plus 2x plus 3x plus 6 equal to 0. Now, we will take the x common that is x plus 2 and 3 common this also becomes x plus 2 equal to 0 and this becomes x plus 3 and this becomes x plus 2 equal to 0. So, either this bracket will be equal to 0 or this bracket will be equal to 0. If we put the first bracket equal to 0, then we will see x is equal to minus 3. And if we put the second bracket equal to 0, we get x equal to minus 2. So, these two are the roots of the quadratic equation. These are called the roots of the quadratic equation. These are called the roots of the quadratic equation. So, a quadratic equation will always have two solutions because the highest power of x is 2 so there will be two solution so in this case we got one solution x equal to minus 3 we will say it x1 and the other solution is x equal to minus 2 we will call it x2 okay so we got the two solution and these are called the roots of this given quadratic equation and this is how we will factorize it all of you take this screenshot or write it in your copy because this is an important example and i will give homeworks based upon this example so that you can practice yes Okay. Now the next that we will see is Sridhar's Acharya formula. This is the formula for solving any quadratic equation. The formula for finding roots of any quadratic equation. Sometimes you will see some questions in the quadratic equation that cannot be factorized. Those which cannot be factorized in that we will use this formula that is called the Sridhar Acharya's formula. This is the Sridhar Acharya formula. The formula says Suppose for any quadratic equation, as you can see, the formula is saying As you can see, suppose for any quadratic equation, this is the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation that is ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. In this, we all know that in this ax square plus bx plus c in this we all know that a should not be equal to 0 a should not be equal to 0 and a we see all our real terms so if we have this quadratic equation in this form then we can say that the roots of this quadratic equation x is given by x is equal to minus b plus minus of root under b square minus 4ac whole upon 2a this is the Sridhar Acharya's formula and this is very important all of you Write this in the copy, write this formula in the copy, this formula is very important. All of you write this formula in the copy, this formula is very important. Questions come every year in exam based upon this formula. So all of you write this formula in the copy, yes. All of you first write it in your copy. Now see, suppose to understand this formula, Suppose to understand this formula, let's take an example. For example, it is written here 9x square minus 15x plus 6 equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. Obviously, this is a quadratic equation. 
9x squared minus 15x plus 6 equal to 0 and you cannot solve it by factorization method. You have to use Sridhar Acharya's formula only. That is this formula only you have to use. You cannot solve it by factorization method. You cannot solve it by factorization method. You have to use Sridhar Acharya's method only to solve this one. You cannot use the factorization method. So, first of all, when we get this kind of questions, which cannot be used by the factorization method of solving, what we will do, we will compare it with the standard form. First of all, we will compare this with the standard form and we will write ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, where a is equal to 9, b is equal to minus 15 and c is equal to 6. Now, we will write the formula, Sridhar Acharya's formula we have written and after writing the formula, what we will do, we will put the values of b put the values of b, put the values of b square, put the values of 4ac, like this we all put the values, put the values of 2a, we put the values, started calculating, after calculation we saw that we got x is equal to 15 plus minus of root 9 by 18, this we got after calculation. So after calculation, now you can see it is written plus minus, that means first we will write the plus, that is the alpha, that is the first root and in the second root what you will do, you will take the only minus sign, that means same thing you have to write same thing you have to write but first you will use only the plus sign again the same thing you will write then you will use here it is plus minus plus you used here now you will use the minus here you will use the minus here yes so we got one root alpha is equal to 15 plus 3 by 18 and beta the second root is 15 minus 3 by 18 so alpha is equal to 1 and beta is equal to 2 by 3 so this is the two roots of this given quadratic equation that is alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 2 by 3. These are the two roots of the given quadratic equation this one. Yes. I hope this question is clear. All of you write it in your copy or take the screenshot. Yes. Now we will see about the graph of any quadratic equation. Suppose when we are trying to understand what is the geometrical meaning of the roots of any quadratic equation. First now we have to understand about the geometrical interpretation of the meaning of the roots of the quadratic equation. So we will see the graph of the quadratic equation. If we plot the graph, the given question 9x square minus 15x plus 6 equal to 0. If we plot this graph in any graphing softwares like the Desmos then we will see then if we plot this equation in Desmos, you will see this kind of graph is obtained and you will see this graph that is cutting the x-axis at two points. This is my x-axis, horizontal axis is the x-axis, it is cutting the x-axis at two points. The first point is this one and the second point is this. So this point, when it is cutting the x-axis, that is called the root of the quadratic equation. That is called the root of the quadratic equation. So the root of the quadratic equation is that point where it is cutting the x-axis or where y is equal to 0, where y is equal to 0. All those points where y is equal to 0 and it is cutting the x-axis, that is called the roots of the quadratic equation. So this is the root of the quadratic equation, this is the root of the quadratic equation. As you can see, these are the points and you can see the y term, the y is 0 and y is 0. So this x is called the root and this x is called the root of this quadratic equation. This first x is called the alpha and the second x is called the beta. Yes, so this is the geometrical meaning of the roots of the quadratic equation. So, okay class, so today we have learned about what have we learned. So, let us do a quick recapitulation. We have learned about algebraic expressions. They are of three kinds, linear, quadratic and cubic expressions. Again, we learned about the algebraic equations. They are linear equations, quadratic equations and cubic equations. Similarly, we saw some examples of quadratic equations some examples of quadratic equations, we saw some non-examples of quadratic equations, we saw how to solve a quadratic equation using the factorization method, then we saw the Sridhar Acharya's formula, then we saw the geometrical interpretation and meaning of the graph of quadratic equation. So this was for the today's class, I hope you understood the class, I will send this pdf in the group and meanwhile you see these are the homeworks, you have to solve this by the factorization methods and it is all in the same pattern, so we have to solve this in the factorization method as I have taught you now. So all of you take the screenshot and solve it in your homework copy. I will share the PDF in the group also. Okay, so try to complete the homework.
ओके स्टूडेंट्स ओके कंप्लीट योर होमवर्क ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू क्लास थैंक यू